Okay, today is, what day is it? July 31st, 2019, uh, weekly Team Enlightened call. Hello, everyone. It's great to see all your smiling faces. Just want to shout out and say thank you to the Tampa St. Pete crew for slamming some doors and leaving flyers. That was awesome. Really appreciate you all. And a um, couple of house, call, house cleaning stuff. Um, just a personal note for all of my mentees, I've changed my, uh, sc schedule links. So I posted that in the, in the team enlightened. So the one that's the solar assessment is specifically for folks that we are doing consultations with our, our clients. And the other link is, uh, for, uh, coaching sessions. Like, so if we need to get into dive into somebody's proposal deeply or, um, Anything else you want to talk about, lead generation, whatever it is, then book one of those and then we'll sit down and chat for a little while and I'll help you out. Um, just a reminder to everyone, Tuesdays uh, is training, of course, with Rachel. And that's really always really fantastic to get on, um, even just to watch the question and answer sessions, even if you're new. Um, even if some of the stuff that they talk about, you may not understand what's happening. It can be really great because lots of great questions come up. Um, also, Rachel will sort of go over proposals in like real time and it can answer lots of questions. So that can be really great. Um, and I know also um, that she is always available. So if if for some reason you, you check my calendar and I'm not available for something, Rachel is also always available for one-on-ones with anybody who wants to um, chat with her and she's awesome. Um, that's kind of, it's like a short list of stuff today. Marion, did you have any um, house cleaning stuff? No? Is that a no? Okay. All right. Um, I wanted to just, I know that we didn't have a ton of time, uh, of course, as always, at the end of our last meeting uh, with our lovely Zoom 40-minute deal. So I wanted to um, open it up just really quickly for anybody who had any questions that they didn't get answered um, during the last meeting around the door knocking um, training that we did. So. Let me uh, unmute everybody, and if you have any questions that have come up or that you wanted answered that you didn't get answered, because I know we have like literally two minutes at the end of that. And if you don't have any questions, and this is a great time for uh, anybody who has like any um, wins during this week or um, any, uh, any general questions that you have about that things have come up that you need help with? No. Awesome. Great. Fantastic. All right, cool. So let's just jump right into it then. And, um, so today what I wanted to talk a little bit about was sort of process around, um, when you get a solar proposal back and sort of what you do, um, you know, to, to kind of go over it before you look, you sit down with the, with the client. Cause of course you don't want to just sort of open it up for the first time when you sit down with a client, right? You want to make sure that it's all sort of to the point that you want to before you move forward. Um, so I thought I would ask Jill, are you okay with this as if we use Cheryl's as an example? Is that okay? Great. Perfect. Okay. So let's, uh, let's jump right into this. So this is actually someone who is local, uh, here in St. Pete. And so when I first open this, the very first thing that I look at is I look at offset because of course we want to get everyone to as close to 100% offset as possible or, you know, 100% if we possibly can do that. So we're pretty close here. The second thing that I check is I always look to see where the, um, what the loan terms are at. A lot of the times when they're coming out with proposals now, they're, they're leaving the default at 10 year. So you might get into a proposal for the first time and you might be like, Oh my gosh, that, that, uh, 
solar payment is way too high and it's like double their, their bill right now. So you just want to make sure that you go down and click on the financing option and then select uh, five, 10 year, uh, 20 year 5.99. Now the reason why I always do 20 year 5.99 is you want to be able to show the homeowner uh, the, mo the, the worst case situ situation. So of course we don't know what they're going to get approved for until we actually run their, their qualifications. So we always want to show them, okay, this is going to be the worst case for you. So, uh, the other thing that I sort of take a look at is, uh, their usage. So this is something that's really important. Um, and basically what you want to make sure is that we've gotten the 12 months of usage and it's going to align up with the 12 months of usage that we have here. So if you go down to the bottom page of the, um, the proposal, this is where it tells you the total kilowatt hour usage for the year. So this is 15,461. So of course we wanna double cross check that with the numbers that we got from the, from the client to make sure that that is actually the correct amount of kilowatt hours that they've used in a year. If it's not, then we would want to change and modify these numbers by simply clicking on them and then changing the numbers here to what they need to be. The other thing is, is especially when selling in Florida, this is not something that pertains to Florida, to, to California, but it's specific to Florida. So for Florida folks, any system that is above 11.7 kilowatts is considered a small commercial system by state law, which means that that homeowner has to have a million dollar umbrella home insurance, homeowner's insurance policy. So to get around that in this situation, what I would do is actually remove a panel so that we are under 11.7 and we don't have to deal with that. Now that's not a bad thing and there's ways around it. Um, and there's actually been a lot of situations. Um, I've heard this from multiple people, uh, including Marianne, who said that they um, had a client or knew somebody. I heard this from a couple other solar consultants that with the right uh, insurance broker, you actually can get your home insurance, homeowner's insurance lowered with a million dollar umbrella in policy versus having, um, you know, versus like your regular homeowner's insurance. Now I'm not gonna say that that's like the standard with everybody, but I do have connection with a mortgage, bro uh, sorry, mortgage, why do I keep on saying mortgage? Home insurance uh, agent who will help us with that if that comes along. So don't uh, we're, we're covered there and we can really just spin that in a nonchalant way and be able to set a timetable with our customer and be able to move them forward if we have to do that. But in this situation, to be honest, since we're so close to 100%, what I would do is take the least performing modules off the system. How do I, how do I figure that out? I look at these arrays. Arrays basically just mean mounting planes. So why there's four arrays is if you look here, there's four places that we have panels uh, uh, put on this house. So that's why there's four different arrays. You can tell the different arrays by the amount of modules, which are panels, uh, by counting the modules. So of course this 20 panel uh, array here is gonna be array one. So what I'm looking for is the highest amount of shading and the least amount of sunlight hours. So shade, 33% is gonna be the highest on uh, ray three, and the sunlight hours is also the lowest. Why is that? Because it's actually the north side of the, the, the north, uh, or sorry, it's the west system. So we'd wanna take off one panel from this, go back up here, and now we're under 11.7. So we're good there now. We don't have to worry about um, that craziness with that, and we're still at 92% offset, which is really great. Um, the other thing that I, that I go through and I check is I just open up the hamburger menu, and I look at my adders, and I make sure that everything is good here in terms of adders. So if I need to do anything like add mounting adders, 
um, like for instance, that they have a concrete tile roof or their roof is flat or they have a metal roof or they have uh, clay tile because these kinds of mounting adders cost extra money to install due to different uh, difficulties that the installation crew comes up against. Um, I also make sure that the electrical adders aren't needed. Now, if I go into a situation where I don't know how big their panel is and they don't know either, I automatically add a, a, a panel upgrade because I'd rather show them the worst case scenario, including a panel upgrade, and then give them the good news that their panel doesn't need to be upgraded because that means I can take that off and it look we look better. So I always include the panel upgrade. Um, and then... This is just my personal preference, but my personal preference is to lower my margins, especially in a place like this where their bill would be more. So like for instance, right now, this person's bill is gonna be $246. So it's gonna be about 49 bucks higher than what they're paying right now. So in these situations, personal preference, everybody is different, but I change my margins and bring them down to a point where they are in line or at least a bill swap. So for instance, right now, the margin's at 95 cents. I would drop this down to something like 60, and then you're a little bit closer to a bill swap than uh, you were before. That's just a personal preference for me because my number one, my, my reason for being in this is seeing a, a sustainable world, a sustainable future. I wanna get solar panels on any, as many roofs as possible. Of course, make money at the same time. But you know, even if, uh, for me personally, even if I make a couple thousand dollars on a deal, I'm totally fine with that as long as it gets on the roof and there's less of the craziness that's happening in the world going on. Um, so that's sort of like the the like the things that I check on a regular basis. The other thing that I also check is um, the uh, cost per kilowatt hour. So if you look on here, this says fifteen point three. This is correct, but actually before when I got the proposal uh, right off, this was actually at twelve cents a kilowatt hour, which is incorrect. So how do we actually figure out exactly what the per kilowatt hour cost should be. What we do is we grab the bill. So we wanna go back into our consultant portal, open up the bill. We would wanna take the total kilowatt hour usage of 278.39, and we would want to divide it by 814, which is the total amount of kilowatt hours that they used in the month. That's gonna give us the total per kilowatt hour price. That includes all the taxes, all the fees, everything. So that's 15.3. So what I did was I went back in here and I actually changed this. Now I wanna, I wanna note something that's really strange and that they're working on fixing. But when you actually open this up and click on it, you see how it said that says 12.1? For some reason, there's a glitch going on where if I actually put 15.3 in here, it's gonna jump all the way to 19 cents a kilowatt hour. So I don't know what's happening with that, but basically when you go in here, you need to just, it's kind of silly, but you have to play around with the numbers until you just get to the place that you need to get. They're working on fixing that. Hopefully it'll be fixed soon. This, what, this is what happens when um, we have a proprietary software platform built specifically for us and there's these kinds of things that happen. So that's pretty much it. Um, I'm gonna, we got about eight minutes left, so I'm going to unmute everybody. And uh, if anyone has any questions, shoot. How do you calculate that number again? Yeah, you, that's what I was going to ask. <laughs> you, take, you take the total amount of the current bill that you got from them. So in this case, it would be $278.39. The, the figure, the, the payment. Yes, the payment. So Which that is only for electricity, right? That doesn't include gas. No, 
does not include gas. Okay. So 278.39 is the total dollar amount of this bill. Mm -hmm. Then you take the total kilowatt hour usage, which for this bill is 1,814, and you divide. What is that information? On this bill, it's mm -hmm. right here. So this last line here, typically mm -hmm. on PG&E's bill, it's going to be in the same sort of place. Um, I can pull up a PG&E bill and show you, Carmen, real quick. And and what is the? Because it's it's a trade, right? So it'd be two seventy eight thirty nine, the dollar amount mm -hmm. divided by the amount of kilowatt hours would be okay. one eight one four equals 15 cents. Did I lose anybody? Did I, is all, everybody all good on that one? Yeah, that's great. That's great. Yep. Perfect. Um, <coughs> For me and me, I have like tire one, tire two, and tire one allowance. Tier one, tier two, yep. <laughs> Can you help me figure this out? Yeah, what's up, John? I don't know if you, you probably can't see these. Uh, I'm trying to, uh, you can't see them, can you? I'm trying to figure out this bill, okay. Let's, let's talk tomorrow one-on-one -on -one, though, John, I'll help you. All right, thank you. Yeah, um, I'm just trying to find a PG&E bill to show um, Carmen, real quick, anyone else have any other questions about solo stuff, solo procedure? No, I think it's pretty easy. Um, you can play around with the system and, and add panels. I mean, you can even figure out people's proposal from other, if it's in the same state, normally you can figure out the same, close to the same price. Um, for somebody else just playing around with it before you actually put it through yeah. by just adding, you know, let's say you want a 10 kilowatt system. You can kind of play with the numbers, figure it all out. So I, I, I like it. Yeah, no, it's great. Um, so Carmen on a PG and E bill where you're going to see the total usage where it does this graph at the bottom that says electrical usage, this period, and then it says eight, this one, it says 850 kilowatt hours. So that's where you're going to find that at the bottom of page number three. Okay. So, the, um, so yeah. you just use the first three numbers because it's a 850, Yeah. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Mary, do you have anything to add to that? Any other things that you do when you look at a solar proposal? Uh, one thing I want to point out is um, just double check your bills because there's a variety of different programs that customers can get on with different providers. So for instance, the last bill that I was looking at had additional like a water heater charge, you know, it's a home energy efficiency program type of thing. So it's not really part of their electrical rate. Um, and may or may not be significant when um, evaluating the cost of electricity versus solar. So just pay special attention and under it's good to understand the bill, especially in your market um, that you're working in because you can point out the pain points that even the consumer wasn't really aware of what they're paying for. So, yeah. um, so just double check, because they may not mention that. Um, that's, that's a great point. Yeah, definitely. And if anybody has any questions about how, how, your, elect, how your utility bills, let's, let's set up a coaching call and we can go over that, because um, that's definitely really important. But uh, yeah, cool. Yeah, thank you for that, Marianne. Sure. Um, did you guys find this helpful? What did you say? Yeah, I did. Definitely. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Um, what is the lowest you can go for the, uh, the kilowatts usage? 
Sorry? What is the lowest you can go for the kilowatts usage? To, to, to do solar, is that what you're asking? No, the margin part that you adjusted to make your system close. Oh, you mean, you mean price per watt? It's 50, yeah, yeah. 50 cents. That's the lowest? That's the lowest. Yeah, okay. Yes, <laughs> but I would not recommend selling at 50 cents because you won't make any money. And uh, we don't, power doesn't want us doing that. Well, power power is going to make 1500 no matter what you sell it for. And so you don't, if you want to make some money as well, you have to sell it for at, at, at least 4500 approximately or more. Um, where the commission is 4,500. So power gets their 15 and you can make your 3000, um, or more right in there. But yeah, if you want to get paid, you have to sell it for more. Otherwise power will get all the money. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's also the thing, the thing too, with solar pricing is that honestly, like we're pretty in the, pretty in the middle of the ballpark, especially in places like California. Um, mm -hmm. And you don't want to, you don't want to be bottom of the basement. You don't want to, you know, I mean, I know there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on with Tesla and all this kind of stuff. And the thing is, is that, you know, it's the difference between going out and buying a television, um, you know, that's like some off brand Chinese brand and buying like LG or Panasonic or something. So mm -hmm. that's the sort of thing is like, you know, there's a lot of, there's been a lot of talk in the solar industry lately about, you know, like, uh, you know, margins and, and price per watt and all that kind of stuff. And really it doesn't matter. What matters is that we're offering a, really, really high quality, you know, with great warranties, great service, all of our panels made in the United States. Um, and that is really going to show. And really when it comes down to it, they're not really buying a system. They're buying, they're buying you. So it's all about you. It's how you build rapport with them. It's how about how you, you know, make a relationship with them. So that's super important. But yeah, that's all the time we got, folks. Thanks so much. Um, you know, once again, of course, see you next week. If anyone needs anything, one-on-ones, whatever, uh, we're here for you. And uh, Tampa Bay Crew, I'll see you a Sunday at Mary Ann's. <laughs> it's a party. Yeah. <laughs>